students from Jersey City are out in the water today pulling the seine net and they've got a big net stretched uh, between two poles and they're dragging it along the estuary and pretty much vacuuming up anything that may be between them and the shore up to where they're going onto the beach. As they pull the net up out of the water, I'm going to try and keep all the animals in there that they catch and then we're going to put them in some buckets and send those kids to work trying to ID those fish and see what they found. So let's go up and take a look at what they caught in the net today. Good, you guys are doing great. Keep on coming. So we're going to come back to Gina Provenzano, who's been sanding with the students today, and um, see what you've gotten. Okay, our students are going to kind of fill you guys in onto what we caught. What was this one in our first tank here? Um, right here, this is a bluefish over here. Um, it's one of the biggest fish that we caught today. Okay, this is our bluefish. He's kind of a common fish that we find here in the estuary. Um, as we said, it's the largest size one that we caught. And even though he's big, he's still a juvenile or a young fish. And sometimes they're known as snappers. And we were very careful picking them up because they have very sharp teeth and they can bite. Now, Gina, this, this is bluefish. I know I eat bluefish at home and it's really good. Are we uh, able to eat any of the fish that you've caught today? Well, that's a very good question and I'm going to actually throw that over to Carrie kirk Flew from NJDP to answer that question for us. Hi, that is a good question and the harbor offers wonderful opportunities for recreational fishing but we advise uh, the public to be careful about the kind of fish that they're catching because there are some who have uh, dioxin and PCB contaminants in them and the states of New York and New Jersey have what's called fish consumption advisories and these are advisories on what to eat and how much to eat safely so before you go fishing we ask you to, ch to check in with your state to see what's safe to eat and if you ever do have a question practice catch and release fishing. Excellent. That's great. Okay, so that's the bluefish. Now, what else have you all caught? Um, this is the striped bass. It's one of the smaller sizes that we caught. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. It's, it has very different names around the country, but its scientific name is Monroe Saxatillus. Um, we caught a lot of them. Okay, yeah, you can see we hit a nice size school of them, and all of the ones that we caught are relatively the same size, and that's because the same size fish travel together in schools or groups for safety. And you can see the nice kind of uh, stripes on their body and the nice dark color on top and the lighter color on their bellies. And their bodies are shaped a little bit differently than that blue fish was. And down on the end, we have our last species of fish that we caught. Someone down there want to tell us what that one is? These are called the Atlantic Silver Size. They're one of the smallest types of fish that we caught, that we caught today. Yeah, they're our small one, and they're a typical um, bait fish. A lot of times people will buy those and put those on a hook to try and catch bigger fish. They're pretty much the bottom of the food chain out here. The bluefish that we caught and the striped bass that we caught will feed on both of those. And the bluefish will even sometimes eat these smaller striped bass. So we got a nice diversity of fish out here in the harbor which tells us that the water's cleaning up. The water chemistry results that you guys saw earlier are a good indication, too, that these fish should be found here. There's lots of oxygen in the water. There's the right levels of salinity. It's a nice temperature. And one other thing that we caught today was a blue claw crab. And this is him right here. You can take a look. This is a relatively small one. Um, in order to keep the blue claw crabs here in these waters, they have to measure four and a half inches from this point here over to this point on their body. You can see their back legs are flattened out into <laughs> swimmerettes. And this guy, unfortunately, only has one claw on him. Um, his other one must have broke off. But as he grows and gets older, when he sheds this shell and molts, he will grow a new claw, so he'll be able to survive and find food. And he's doing pretty well out here. He's also dark colored on top, so he can match the color of the bottom out in the estuary. So these are some common things that we found in our crab. And all our fish are juvenile species, which means that they're young ones that rely on the waters of the estuary to survive. They also rely upon the salt marsh habitat, which, out, which is out around on the backside of the peninsula. A lot of these fish live there. They, um, they grow up in the, in the nursery grounds of the estuary. It's a very important function uh, of the estuary, which is alive and well here in the middle of this very, very urban estuary. Grab him nice and firm. You got him? Right in the bucket. There you go. Yep, go ahead. Wet your hands and grab those fish and get them right in the bucket.